Is anybody ready to receive the word of the Lord today? Let's begin reading at verse 32, and let's read together. But remember the former days when, after being enlightened, you endured a great conflict of sufferings, partly by being made a public spectacle through reproaches and tribulations, and partly by becoming sharers with those who were so treated. For you showed sympathy to the prisoners and accepted joyfully the seizure of your property, knowing that you have for yourselves a better possession and a lasting one. Therefore, do not throw away your confidence, which has a great reward. For you have need of endurance, so that when you have done the will of God, you may receive what was promised. Dear Sir, a few days ago, you phoned us about the job you applied for with our company, and we told you you did not get the job. However, we are now writing to inform you that you did not get the job. We wanted to make sure you understood that. Sincerely, Personnel Department. Dear Sir, you recently applied for a position with us, but you did not get it as we have infor informed you by phone and by mail. However, we have not heard back from you that you completely understand that you failed to get the job. <laughs> Please write or call and let us know that you realize you are not employed by us in any way and never will be. <laughs> Sincerely, Personnel Department. Dear Sir, Please be advised that the person we hired instead of you has been promoted to a department manager, and he has asked us to inform you that should a position open up, he would not hire you. <laughs> Sincerely, Personnel Department. Dear Sir, if it is any consolation, we feel that if we had hired you, by now we would have been forced to let you go. Sincerely. Personnel Department. And my personal favorite, dear Professor, thank you for your letter of March 16. After careful consideration, I regret to inform you that I am unable to accept your refusal to offer me an assistant professor position in your department. This year, I have been particularly fortunate in receiving an unusually large number of rejection letters. With such a varied and promising field of candidates, it is impossible for me to accept all refusals. Despite your outstanding qualifications and previous experience in rejecting applicants, I find that your rejection does not meet my needs at this time. <laughs> Therefore, I will assume the position of assistant professor in your department this August. <laughs> I look forward to seeing you then. Best of luck in rejecting future applicants. <laughs> we laugh at the absurdity of these mock correspondences, but the reality is there are few things as hurtful as rejection. To reject is to refuse. To reject is to throw back. The number one reason most people don't do interesting things is they are afraid of rejection. They don't ask that special someone on a date. They don't start a business. They don't even apply for a job, all because of fear of rejection. Anyone who has ever done anything of note knows what it's like to experience the pain of rejection. Listen to these actual quotes from rejection letters sent by publishers to now very famous writers, sent to Sylvia Plath, there certainly isn't enough genuine talent for us to take note. Sent to Rudyard Kipling, I'm sorry, Mr. Kipling, but you just don't know how to use the English language. <laughs> sent to Emily Dickinson, your poems are quite as remarkable for defects as for beauties, and are generally devoid of true poetical qualities. Sent to Ernest Hemingway, 
regarding his book, The Torrents of Spring. It would be extremely rotten taste to say nothing of being horribly cruel should we want to publish it. <laughs> Rejection comes in all shapes, forms, and sizes. It comes when children reject the values you've tried to instill in them. It comes when a school rejects your application for enrollment. It comes when the company rejects your idea for a new product or for increased productivity. It comes when a business rejects your application for employment. It comes when an organization rejects you from being part of their group. It comes when a loved one rejects you in favor of someone else. Nothing can ravage your heart like rejection. The most penetrating wound is the painful rejection by a loved one. Even death itself doesn't pierce your heart as deeply as when you know you've been rejected by someone you trusted and were devoted to. It's devastating when someone dear to your heart deserts you. Rejection chips away at your self-image. It chisels down your confidence. It crushes your hope. Rejection has the ability to totally incapacitate you. Long after the rejection occurs, there remains this haunting, lingering voice in the deep recesses of your mind that continues to whisper, you're unwelcome, you're unwanted, you're unworthy. Well, if you've ever suffered the pain that comes from rejection, I have some good news to tell you today. As much as it hurts, as much as it tears you apart, as much as it breaks your heart and crushes your spirit, the good news is rejection is not fatal. Oh, I know we, we tend to personalize the rejection and make it about us and our inadequacies or our failures. We focus on what's wrong with us that caused us to be rejected. What we fail to understand is that rejection says more about the one doing the rejecting than it does about the one who has been rejected. Rejection isn't an indictment of your being. The rejection you receive doesn't spell the end of your story. I, I, I can promise you this. If you choose to live courageously, you will experience rejection. I can also promise you, if you choose to live courageously and deal appropriately with rejection, you will survive to show up for more, and you will learn how to live the overcoming life. The question is, the question is whether you will have a fixed mindset or a growth mindset. A fixed mindset accepts everything that comes down the path as the way it's going to be, and nothing can change it, so a rejection is the end of the line. On the other hand, a growth mindset recognizes that maybe this path isn't going to work, but instead of shutting down and drying up, it keeps trying. A growth mindset tries another path, and then another, and then another. It refuses to give up. And, and this is the exhortation we find in the verses we read as our text at the beginning of this message. <clears throat> the letter to the Hebrews was written to a group of Jews who had come to faith in Jesus as their Messiah. As time progressed, those who hadn't believed in Jesus as Messiah and received him as Savior began to try and persuade these new followers of Jesus to return to the traditions and the law they had formerly practiced. These new believers experienced persecution and abuse. There was trial and testing of their new faith. From the very beginning of the letter, the writer is very firm in exhorting these new believers not to go back, but to keep going forward in their walk with the Lord. One by one, the writer compares the traditions and practices of the Jewish faith they once followed against the work of Christ and shows over and over again how Jesus is the better way. 
In the very first chapter, he demonstrates how Jesus is better than the angels. As the letter unfolds, he talks about how Jesus is better than the Levitical priesthood. Jesus is better than Moses. Jesus is better than Abraham. Jesus is better than the sacrifices of the Old Testament. Step by step, he walks them through every part of their history and tradition and encourages them to hold on to their faith because now their faith is in something better than they've ever had or ever known before. Their faith is now in Jesus, the better way. Now, the reason this letter of encouragement is so important to this little band of new believers is because they had been subjected to persecution, oppression, and most hurtful of all, they had been rejected by family, by friends, and by countrymen. As part of the rejection, they were excluded from the synagogue and barred from the house of worship. Riots broke out in response to the unrest in the city. All the Jews were then kicked out of the city of Rome. This group of believers had been rejected by those they loved. As a result of the tension that ensued, they were the cause of an entire people group being rejected from the city. Those are the events that are being talked about in verses 32 and 33 of our text when the writer says, remember the former days when after being enlightened, you endured a great conflict of sufferings, partly by being made a public spectacle through reproaches and tribulations and partly by becoming sharers with those who were so treated. Well, no wonder they were discouraged. No wonder they were doubting. No wonder they were hurting. But right in the midst of the horrible pain of rejection, the writer then sounds a note of encouragement that helps move these believers away from a fixed mindset toward a growth mindset. He doesn't deny the hurt, neither does he allow the hurt to be the final word. I need to back up and say that again. Neither does he allow the hurt to be the final word. Listen again to his message of hope and challenge and comfort and encouragement. It's in verses 35 and 36. Listen to it and understand this isn't just a word for that little band of first century believers, but I want you to listen to it as a word for those of you who struggle with feelings of rejection. Therefore, do not throw away your confidence, which has a great reward. For you have need of endurance, so that when you have done the will of God, you may receive what was promised. L listen to the way it reads in the Message Bible. So don't throw it all away now. You were sure of yourselves then. It's still a sure thing. But you need to stick it out, staying with God's plan so you'll be there for the promised completion. Now, <clears throat> if you're going to get into a growth mindset so you can get past the debilitating effects of rejection and get into the overcoming life, the first thing you're going to have to do is you're going to have to remember your position. The, the pain of rejection makes you feel unwanted, unwelcome, unworthy. Am I, am I talking where anybody has lived? Okay, y'all doing okay with this? The, the pain of rejection makes you want, you throw, want to throw up your hands in despair and retreat from any kind of meaningful interaction. The pain of rejection makes you want to curl up in a ball and completely disengage behind walls of isolation. And the enemy of your soul likes nothing better than to take advantage of your hurt. And he'll whisper in your ear, you're no good, you just as well abandon all hope. But I've come to this day to this pulpit today with a word of truth to break the chains of bondage that have been wrapped over your life by the wounds of rejection. Now hear me carefully. I've come to remind you today, you are not who your loved one says you are. Let that sink into your spirit, somebody. You are not who your loved one says you are. You are not who your employer says you are. You're not who your teacher says you are. You're not who your creditor says you are. You're not who your friends say you are. You're certainly not who your spiritual enemy says you are. But you are who God says you are. 
God says in Genesis 1, you are made in his image according to his likeness. God says in Psalm 8, you are made a little lower than the angels, crowned with glory and majesty. I'm building something into your life today. Psalm, God says in Psalm 139, you are fearfully and wonderfully made. God says in Deuteronomy 28 and 13, you are the head and not the tail. God says in Ephesians 1, 6, that you are accepted in the beloved. God says in John 15, 16, you are chosen by Jesus. God says in Colossians 1, 14, you are redeemed by the blood of Jesus. God says in Romans 5, 1, you are justified by faith. God says in 2 Corinthians 5, 17, you are a new creation. God says in 1 John 3, 1, he has loved you so much, he calls you his child. God says in Romans 8, 15, you've been adopted into his forever family. God says in Ephesians 1, 13, you are sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. God says in Ephesians 2, 6, you've been raised up and seated with Christ in heavenly places. God says in John 10, 28, you're kept securely in the Father's hand. God says in Matthew 5, 13, you are the salt of the earth. God says in Matthew 5, 14, you are the light of the world. God says in Romans 8, 37, you are more than a conqueror. I'm telling you, you're very important to the heavenly father. So, so maybe you've been rejected, but don't throw away your confidence. Remember your position. There's a second thing you're going to need to do in order to get out of a fixed mindset into a growth mindset so you can live the overcoming life. You're going to have to recapture your profession. The writer says, do not throw away your confidence. That literally means do not throw away confident confession of Christ in the midst of opposition. I want to remind somebody today that rejection isn't going to write the end of your story. God is going to write the end of your story. He has plans for you, big plans. So whatever you do, don't throw away your confidence. Whatever you do, hang on to hope. Somebody needs to boldly profess Psalm 27, 10, my father and my mother have forsaken me, but the Lord will take me in. You need to profess Psalm 38 or 34 and 18, the Lord is near to the brokenhearted and saves the crushed in spirit. You need to profess Romans 8, 28, and we know that God causes all things to work together for good to those who love God, to those who are called according to his purpose. You need to profess Isaiah 41, 10. Do not fear, for I am with you. Do not anxiously, anxiously look about you, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. Surely I will help you. Surely I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. You need to profess Job chapter 5, verses 19 and 20. From six troubles, he will deliver you. Even in seven, evil will not touch you. In famine, he will redeem you from death and in war from the power of the sword. You need to profess Psalm 27 and 1. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the defense of my life. Whom shall I dread? You know, when you're, when you're rejected, you have all of these thoughts, all of these, what's, what's wrong? What's, what's going on? What, what do I do now? How do I, how do I move forward? How do I handle this? We, we, help me, Jesus. We used to sing about that. What, what, we used to sing about the right focus of that. Anybody remember singing this? Many things about tomorrow I don't seem to understand. 
But I know who holds tomorrow. And I know who holds my hand. Whatever you do, hold on to hope. Listen, the tiniest thread will twist into an unbreakable cord when you wrap yourself around hope. Let hope anchor you in the possibility that rejection is not the end. There is another chapter to your book. There is another verse to your song. There is another movement to your symphony. There is another act to your drama. Rejection is not fatal. So raise up the hands that hang down. Square your shoulders. Lift your eyes. Let the joy of the Lord be your strength. Hold on to God's promises. Keep confessing his word. Refuse to give in to the lies of the enemy. Don't lose your confidence, recapture your profession. Blessed be God forever. Remember your position, recapture your profession. One more thing I want to give you to get out of a fixed mindset into a growth mindset so you can live the overcoming life. Respond with perseverance. That's what verse 36 is talking about when it says, for you have need of endurance so that when you have done the will of God, you may receive what was promised. See, one thing is absolutely certain in the kingdom of God. You can't lose if you don't quit. I don't know who needed to hear that, but, I, but somebody really needed to hear that. If you read the end of chapter 10, you find the writer saying in verses 37 through 39, for yet in a very little while, he who is coming will come and will not delay. But my righteous one shall live by faith. And if he shrinks back, my soul has no pleasure in him. But we are not of those who shrink back to destruction, okay. but of those who have faith to the preserving of the soul. He, it, but he doesn't stop there. Remember, in, in the manuscripts, there are no chapter and verse distinctions. There are no breaks there. Right after he says that, he continues and writes the most famous chapter that we have on the heroes of faith in chapter 11. People who kept going regardless of the difficulties. See, trouble came, but they responded with persevering faith. Heartaches came, disappointments came, trials came, rejection came, but every time they all responded with persevering faith. They refused to give up. They refused to give in. They responded with persevering faith. This is how you defeat rejection. This is how you get into a growth mindset. This is how you win the prize. This is how you live the overcoming life. You respond with persevering faith. You just keep moving. You keep going forward. You refuse to settle in. You refuse to quit. You hang on to the promise of God. You respond with persevering faith. Rejection, I'm beating this to death, but somebody's got to get this in your spirit. Rejection isn't fatal. Rejection is not the determining factor. Rejection is not the end of the story. You get up one more time. You fight one more round. Just because you're knocked down does not mean you're knocked out. You live by persevering faith. I'll tell you how you live. You know, some of the best theology is found in our hymnals. So let me tell you how you live. I care not today what tomorrow may bring. If shadow or sunshine or rain. The Lord I know ruleth o'er everything. And all of my worry is vain. Though tempests may blow and the storm clouds arise, obscuring the brightness of life, I'm never alarmed at the overcast skies. The master looks on at the strife. 
I know that he safely will carry me through no matter what evils be tied. Why should I then care if the tempest may blow if Jesus walks close to my side? And our Lord shall return to this earth some sweet day. Our troubles will then all be o'er. <laughs> the master so gently will lead us away beyond that blessed heavenly shore. So what am I going to do while all of that's going on? I'm living by faith in Jesus above. Trusting, confiding in his great love. From all harm safe in his sheltering arms. I'm living by faith and feel no alarm. Sing it with me, come on. Living by faith in Jesus above, trusting, confiding in his great love. From all harm saved in his sheltering arms. Come on, stand with me. Let's sing it together again. Living by faith in Jesus above, trusting, confiding in his great love from all hearts. Remember your position, recapture your profession, and respond with perseverance. I want to pray with you. I believe the Lord wants to do a powerful work in somebody's life today. He's present by the power of his Holy Spirit right now. He has come into this room in a, in a unique way today to break the bondage of the fear of rejection. He's come to heal you of the hurt from rejection. If that's something you need, I want to pray for you right now. If somebody's here in this house in this service and you say, Pastor, I need his touch in that area of my life. Would you just put your hand up real quick and put it right back down so I know who you are so I'm praying for you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Father, hurts are evident in this room. They're in our lives, the lives of your people. And you don't want us to have to be bowed down with that kind of care and that kind of distraction and that, with that wound. You, you don't want that. You, you came so that all of our wounds would be healed. Yes. And that includes the pain from rejection. So I'm asking right now, Holy Spirit, would you just go into the heart, deep into the heart of every person that shares in this prayer right now and put your finger on that place of hurt and release your grace of healing and strength and wholeness uh-huh. Right? I, I, mm. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for doing that. I sense you doing that. Go ahead. Just release that to the Lord. Just 
out of your own heart. Come on, just, just release it to him. He's doing a deep work in somebody's heart right now. Just go ahead, open up to him. Let him do it. Holy Spirit, move in. Move in. Move into that place. I thank you for doing that. Thank you for doing that.